Today's Sharpen My Axe is how to modify this guitar without buying any tools. I went to San Diego and I did a video with Marty Schwartz from Marty's Music. And in that video, we picked this Tajima, which was less than $200. For whatever reason, I like the uh, Strat more. Nostalgic color based on my very first guitar. Right. And also, I just was more inspired by it. And that's probably the most important thing. And so we're gonna uh, make some other content yep. and we're gonna use this kind of as a jumping off point. I highly suggest you check out that video. The link is down below. To illustrate how a beginner could modify this guitar, we're going to be installing some pickups without using a soldering iron. In fact, this entire video can be done with just a Phillips head screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, and some measuring tape. I know I said without buying any tools, but I'm hoping that you have at least these tools laying around the house, or you can borrow them from a friend. Now, the reason I decided to do this challenge was because one of the comments that I get a lot on the other Sharpen Max videos is, why would you put $400 worth of stuff or $200 worth of stuff into a $100, $300 guitar? Today's theme is definitely, not only do you not need tools, but everything that I'm gonna put on this guitar, you can remove and put the original stuff back just as easy. And that means when you go to sell this guitar, you won't lose any of your money spending it on these parts. The first thing I'm gonna update this guitar with is a Vega trim. Marty mentioned that the tremolo was a little stiff and it didn't feel really good and we can adjust the springs but I know from experience a lot of it is just how the tremolo feels. The Vega trim is one of my favorite tremolos and we're going to install this with an adapter plate and show you how to improve the guitar with that. So I took the strings off the guitar and what we're going to do is break it up into three sections. The first is going to be replacing the bridge with the new Vega trim. They have two versions and they have adapter plates. This is for a a six screw bridge and then they have one for a two post bridge. It comes with everything you need. It has two Allen wrenches to make all the adjustments on the bridge, the screws you need, and of course three types of spring tension. I'm going to go with 10 gauge strings on this guitar. So we're going to be using the medium tension strings instead of the high and the low. We're going to use that measuring tape to quickly jot down the distance between the tip or the end of each saddle on the original bridge and the nut. What's nice about that is you'll have a reference when you install the new bridge. This is by no means an exact way to set intonation. In fact, it's not even gonna get you intonated. What it is going to get you is a general guideline of where this guitar is. Let's go ahead and take the old bridge out. It's a pretty straightforward process. Just go ahead and flip the guitar over and we're gonna take these springs off. Take that out. And now we're gonna install the new adapter plate. This is very easy. Just go ahead and line it up. And you'll notice here, there's these oval shapes right here. You're not gonna put all six screws in, only four, and it's included with it. And what's great is this allows you, uh, because of these ovals, to just go ahead and set it, and then be able to shift it as you need it to line up with the, uh, the neck. So now that we have the plate on and we're ready to install the bridge, we're not going to put the bridge on because what we're going to do is go ahead and do the electronics now that this pl plate's mounted. Because once we do the electronics, we will then change the tuning keys out and then go ahead and add the bridge. He also mentioned that he liked the tuners, but he prefers locking tuners. So I purchased a set of hip shot locking tuners with an ump plate. And that will allow us to install these tuners without drilling any holes and more importantly, remove them and put the original tuners back when we're done. So now we want to go ahead and, and put on the new tuning keys. Go ahead and flip the guitar over and take the old tuning keys out. Go ahead and remove the old tuning keys. And now it's time to install the new ones. These have what's called an ump plate and the ump plate lines up. You're going to put the longest tuning keys at the back of the headstock and the shortest at the front. You can see they don't move and the plates hold them in position. You can see there's a little lip on each one and it stops the tuning key from moving in either direction. And just using compression, you are all set. He also mentioned that the pickups sounded pretty good for single coils, but he didn't like the 60 cycle hum. And he also thought they sounded a little bright. So I went with some Mojo Tone 67 pickups. This will give you that Woodstock kind of warmer, fatter kind of Strat sound. And more importantly, these are noiseless, so no 60 cycle hum. Now I know what you're thinking, how are we gonna install these without soldering them? 
I also had Mojo Tone send out a solderless kit. Yes, this kit has all three potentiometers, the output jack, and an upgraded capacitor, so we can install those pickups to this on this pick guard, and again, without any soldering, and remove it just as easily. So let's go ahead and remove the pick guard assembly. I went ahead and removed it from the guitar, and a couple things uh, to, to note is that uh, it has an inexpensive five-way switch, some inexpensive potentiometers, and really low, low-cost pickups. You can tell with the ceramic magnets at the bottom, these are the inexpensive pickups. We are going to keep this pick guard to put all the new assembly on, so let's go ahead and just take this thing apart. Now, I know I said you're not going to need any tools, and I know some of you are probably asking, like, well, how do you take things like this off? Well, obviously, this video is about not using a lot of tools. How do you take these off? Uh, well, sometimes you're lucky and you can just hand tighten them, but really, believe it or not, the Allen wrenches that come included with the Vega trim, I've learned a trick over the years where you just put it on one side and push. And um, believe it or not, you can use it. This stuff should not be cranked down so tight because it will crack the plastic. Same with the tuning keys, you know what I mean? You don't need to crank these things down. Now, of course, it's probably a better idea to use a socket wrench or an ESP tool. The point of this video is that do-it-yourselfers can do this with limited to no tools. So I'm trying to keep within those parameters. Let's go ahead and put all this electronics in that box. And don't forget to keep your work area clean. So what we have here now is the Mojo Tone assembly. We have the three pickups. These are the noiseless 67s. I'm gonna go ahead and take one apart uh, and show you. Let's go ahead. And what looks like a single coil is really a dual coil. You can see right here, these are two separate coils, like a mini humbucker. So essentially it's like a mini humbucker designed to sound like a single coil. And uh, we'll see how that comes across. But it's it, uh, my experience on the videos I heard online sounded really good. But you'll find that there's no such thing really as a true single coil that is noiseless. There are some versions out there, but majority of them are going to be dual coils like this to cancel out. So what we have here is the instructions and this is super easy. And I said you needed a flathead screwdriver. You really don't. You can use anything. This is about the easiest thing you can do. We're going to go ahead and assemble or wire the pickups up. We're going to start with the neck pickup. They already come with the wires already stripped and ready to go. And according to the instructions, we want the neck pickup uh, one is hot and G is for ground. Ground is your black wire. And what these do that's really cool, let me get in on this, is let's start with the ground wire. You can see here it says ground, G for ground. Line it up. You take your flat screwdriver, you push this button down. That's all you do, very carefully. Push this in there and let up. And there it bites it. And the same thing as before, push this down. Now you could probably do this with your finger, but this sure is a lot easier. There you go. And that is wired up. It's in there, it's, it's strong. Let's go ahead and go with the middle pickup. The middle pickup is going to be the hot is number two. Same thing, push that down. You cannot get any easier than this. <laughs> we now also have the output switch to connect and of course the ground wire to the guitar. Let's go ahead and do that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just install this on the pick guard. There is our a pick guard assembly all ready to go. And what's nice now is we just have to wire it up to the guitar. So to install this, we're gonna do the same thing as before. Go ahead and push down the button, push the wire in there and lift up. Same thing with your ground. And there you go. That is how fast that was. You are completely wired up. Now, before you go ahead and put all the pick guard screws back on the assembly, uh, it's a good idea to plug it into an amp and just go ahead and test them by tapping on the magnets. They should be loud and plumeful. I like that word. Like everything just kind of hits. Do the in-betweens, right? And like we talked about that tone control. Definitely working. Now what's great, let's go ahead and install the bridge. So you mount the spring in and then you, you use this to hold it in place. And that's a really cool feature. Okay, so just go ahead and install the bridge. 
And you can see it sits on a very sharp knife edge and that goes right into this slot right there. And we'll Well, here it is, all done. The bridge was fantastic. In fact, the bridge is so good that I'm gonna do another video where I install this bridge in my custom shop Stratocaster, so look for that video. But the electronics, I have to say, without a doubt, these are the easiest electronics I've ever put in. And I know this is something I've talked about in the past about these clip systems and how I don't really enjoy them, but this, the way they did this, with the uh, compression springs where you lock in the, the bare wire. I thought that was great. I literally wired this up in minutes, but all of that, of course, included with the new locking keys, uh, isn't important until we hear it. So let's go ahead and do the sound samples. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the bridge position. We'll go through all the positions with distortion and do the comparison. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that 60 cycle hum. That's a, definitely a big difference in the 60 cycle hum. They're a lot quieter. Obviously, the noise lists are gonna add value because of the fact that you don't have to deal with the amp humming when you're playing a gig. Here we go. So now let's check out the clean sound and see what the upgraded pickups did. The next thing Marty mentioned was he really likes it when the tone control is assigned to the bridge humbucker. And uh, and I thought, okay, so let's go ahead and change that. So in the comparison, it's gonna be tough because this bridge doesn't have a tone control assigned to it and the new one will. So we'll have to just go off that. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll go to the neck position and compare the original electronics with tone control to the new Mojo tone one. Now we've done some sound samples. Let's do something that is really cool. I wanna show you how the bridge works. Um, obviously new locking keys help, but the nut was cut really well. And that's another thing that was really impressive about a guitar that was under $200. But this new bridge, let me show you how impressed I am with it. <laughs> talk about how it feels so smooth it's just a nice feeling bridge probably one of the best tremolos i've ever felt and i really saying a lot because i really like a lot of the goto bridges but man i really like this bridge
Very, very cool. I think this is a, a huge improvement to the guitar overall. I'm really curious to see what Marty's gonna think. And as always, I wanna thank everybody for returning to the channel and checking out the videos. For newcomers, please make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, I wanna thank you for your time. And until the next time, know your gear.